got this call of urgency. It's been happening like this. The phone jumping off the hook, call after call. Everybody not being able to have a fullness as to what's going on and then having the nerve to say to I and I, you're a soothsayer. Tell us what's going on. How did this happen? High Priest Kwatamani, Supreme Soothsayer, Soul Seer, Spiritual Healer and Revealer, Chief Elder of the Kwatamani First Genesis Tribe, the oldest, longest sustained, raw and living, plant fuel consuming, family community order known over half a century and still going strong in the tropical rainforest. The sacred ancestors of old gave us some eldership teaching and reasoning that we need to know right here and right now. happening right before our eyes and most cannot even see it. Too busy making judgment on physical things and stuff without looking at the nature of consciousness that is actually moving to a peak. And now I begin to see how was I going to respond to this person? Because I focus on, on spirit conscious resurrection of sacred ancestral garden culture community so that we can actually survive what is happening as Mother Earth continue to shake, shift things, lifting up a new consciousness. When I look at the offsprings and I see the various things that are going on, we begin to realize that there's a future that has to be prepared. Yet, Mama Earth is shifting and changing and her changes will not be interrupted or interfered by any of us unless we synchronize. And even then, there's a lot of damage that has been done in the past. We have to comprehend. There have been certain circumstances that have forced, coerced, or some kind of a way programmed mass populations to idolize and worship a nature of energy totally opposed to their sacred ancestral higher peace conscious way of life. The requirement of 1512 or the requirements was a declaration of domination, control, and war read by Spanish military forces as they invaded the lands of the Children of the Sun. Page 235, Banu Book 1 by High Priest Quatamani. If we continue to uphold and maintain that toxic parallel of thought and reasoning in our attitudes, our values, our behaviors, and our beliefs, if we continue to maintain the beliefs that actually were forced into our consciousness through violence, disruption, and interruption, and then continue to be programmed on all of the offsprings born off of he and she. Quote, I certify to you that with the help of God, we shall powerfully enter into your country and shall make war against you in all ways and manners that we can and shall subject you to the yoke and obedience of the church and of their highnesses. We shall take you and your wives and your children and shall make slaves of them and as such shall sell and dispose of them as their highnesses may command. And we shall take away your goods and shall do you all the mischief and damage that we can as to vassals who do not obey and refuse to receive their Lord and resist and contradict him. And we protest that the deaths and losses which shall accrue from this are your fault. That until unless we focus on detoxing and purging that toxic disorder, the vicious circle will continue to death do we part. We have to really comprehend what has went on. And this is where there has been a master con game. We must have straightforward communication as to what has gone on to get us into this stage. And we have to start at a particular place in space because we can go all the way back a couple of thousand years ever since this AD cycle began and even a bit beyond. But if we take a look at what's going on, let's say, let's say we start with, quote, the dumb devices is a papal bull, a special decree by the Pope 
issued by Pope Nicholas V in 1452 that is credited by some as ushering in the West African slave trade. It states, We grant you by these present documents with our apostolic authority full and free permission to invade, search out, capture, and subjugate the Saracens and pagans and any other unbelievers and enemies of Christ, wherever they may be, as well as their kingdoms, duchies, counties, principalities, and other property, and to reduce their persons into perpetual slavery. Additionally, there were two other papal bulls, one to Portugal for the full rights to the lands of Africa, and one to Spain for the full rights to the lands of the Americas. The hub of the West African triangular transatlantic slave trade. Page 230. From the prophetic 12,594-year Banu cycle, encoding the consciousness of higher peace through the divine union of masculine and feminine energy, Book 1, by High Priest Guatemani. If we get a clarity on these things, it will then really, sincerely, and holistically give us a sight on the nature of energy that has been forced into our consciousness to get us to submit to oppositional nature, hell-bent on dominating, controlling, and ruling the soulful essence of who we be. In almost every situation when the invading tribes came, they were met with welcoming populations who attempted to assist them in their journeys. In this instance, we are going to talk about what was declared as the New World, beginning with the Caribbean. Quote, historical notes tell us that Columbus ran his flagship, the Santa Maria, aground on the island of Hispaniola in 1492. Records indicate that the Taino people helped rescue Columbus and his invading Spanish crew and helped salvage the shipwrecked Santa Maria, end of quote. Page 288 from the prophetic 12,594-year Banu cycle, encoding the consciousness of higher peace through the divine union of masculine and feminine energy, book one, by high priest Guatemani. And all of the help that was reached out to him had no relevancy. Quote, in his journals, Columbus wrote of the peaceful, generous nature of the Taino people, he noted their language did not have a word for war. Quote, So tractable, so peaceable are these people that I swear to your majesties, there is not in the world a better nation. They love their neighbors as themselves, and their discourse is ever sweet and gentle. Their manners are decorous and praiseworthy. Neither better people nor land can there be. End of quote. He named them Indios and referred to the Taino people as children of God. But he also wrote, quote, I could conquer the whole of them with 50 men and govern them as I pleased. End of quote, page 288, the new book one by High Priest Quatamani. And that reality became more important than the women and the children. Quote, estimates of the Taino population of Haiti in 1492 range up to 8 million people. In 1496, according to the results of a Spanish census, the populace had dropped to approximately 3 million. By 1516, only 12,000 remained. In 1542, 200 remained alive. By 1555, nearly all 8 million were gone. Page 232, but new book one by High Priest Quatamani. How could one not comprehend what has gone on in their mindset for generations after generations upon generations after generations? How could one not see what has happened to those who victimized as well as those who were victims and all of the other elements that actually has worked to divide, conquer, separate humanity into splinters, bits, pieces, and parts in conflict with each other over absolutely nothing other than self-deified individualism. Then I began to see how deep is the divisive state of those who actually have lost all relationships with Mother Earth, wind, rain, and sun. And then now I realized, oh, we seriously need some holistic living healing. This is no joke. Because you're looking at populations focused on 
conflict, confusion, and chaos. Living off of the ghosts and goblins and demons of the dead that follow one to work, to school, and to bed. Stuck up inside one's head. Breeding, seeding, feeding. Sexual violation, violence, war, and crime as a way of life. It's a call to realign deeper and deeper into the mental, physical, and spiritual consciousness following divine socioeconomic family community order. It's a call to gather a greater amassment of the sacred few, the few, the few, the few, the few, the few, few, wherever they be. Because it is quite clear that conflict, confusion, and chaos is and has continued to be on the horizon. You see, we want to forget about certain things. Some have gone so deep into all of those vibrations and patterns of assimilating and integrating and adopting a way of life that diametrically opposed divine order that they cannot see the tree of life consciousness. They're stuck in the fog a mass deception, and it do not matter the race, the creed, the color of one's skin, the texture of one's hair, although, although those patterns have been a master tool to divide, conquer, and separate. Yes, I did say segregate. You know, like apartheid. In any of the other terms and conditions that will express the fact that there are a few who somehow has been given a false reality that because of one's skin color that one has become supreme. And it's like, wow, what's going on with humanity? We have to come to recognize that if one then submits to that ideology, be it force, coerce, or simply because one feels that one may get, a, let's say, a, an advantage over one's own kin or colleagues or whatever. It's all going to be shot to hell because we have to focus on the reality that man, he and she must have a higher peace conscious thought and reasoning in every action in order to survive these coming pending times. Yeah, just piecemealing. Yeah, just piecemealing. Dealing with the urgent need for healing. Feeling the feeling of humanity dealing with the impending 9-11. Prophecy AD 2027. Yeah, dealing with what is in store as we prepare to exit the door of what has been AD. 2024, the sleeper, where the grim weeper is the gatekeeper of a bottomless pit that goes deeper and deeper into the subconscious mind, leaving its victims mentally, physically, spiritually, deaf, dumb, blind, out of sync, out of focus, running out of time. Dealing with the obstacles along the way that prevent a sacred view from hearing what the eye and I have to say, but the ancestors say. Prophecy A.D. 2027. It is very clear to those who have the ears to hear that we're in a situation. And no matter how much rap and rhetoric, how much thrust, how much massive wealth acquired, or how piss poor one is, the whole significant fact is we're going to have to submit to divine order to survive as souls. And we're talking about soul-to-soul -soul relationships. We're not stuck or hung up in skin color and tone because it's not about the color of one's skin. It is actually about the state of consciousness. One lives within. And when you look around, that is the most obvious thing in the world. However, when one is insecure on one side of the fence or the other, when one is unable 
to take the onus of responsibility for one's thoughts and reasons and action, it gives one an opportunity to point the finger at somebody or the other side of that fence that has been actually well structured with an organized master plan to control the soul of the essence of the he and she of man. It is clear to those who have the eyes to see and the ears to hear within spirit conscious reasoning that there's a big mirage and the ghosts and goblins and the demons of the dead is running this thing and nobody seems to comprehend as one sits in one's own fantasies, delusions, illusions, and dreamland versions of reality. Steep deep into a nightmare that is scaring the hell out of folks. And so they seek something to pacify that wandering mind. And it's easy to take the escape route point the finger at someone else. And then all of your personal insecurities, you can then begin to blame on someone else because your fantasy is not able to become a reality. You see, we had all better take a look at the adverse effects of those various master programs and schemes because the more divided we are, the more conquered we are by a nature of energy diametrically opposed to our existence. The sacred ancestors of old gave us some eldership teaching and reasoning that we need to know right here and right now as we prepare to move forward into a prophetic time that is very real, just as real as the story that was told about Seth child of regret, the child who hated all things green and growing. And it is all here and now showing. Quote, we must be clear about the fact that the Sethian nature opposes all that is green and growing, and therefore, by the nature of the self that emerges out of the Sethian nature, there is no true concern for our supreme ancestral mother earth, which is being used as a dumping ground for a disposable culture. The Sethian nature did indeed rip and tear itself away from the supreme womb that birthed the divine children of the sun, self, trying to find its own way within the toxic parallel outside the circle of life. The child who made the decision based upon his own self-deified individualistic vision and went about the process seeking and searching to destroy his brother, putting him in a box of consciousness, smothering his reality, he thought. The Sethian nature profits from phases and stages of opposition that lead to the escalations of war, starting with the war waged by the self against the ancestral soul of man, he and she. This inner war is projected into every relationship established by the self. And then when it got to the point of finding out that, hey, those feminists, including the one that he had a connection with and he thought that he dominated, controlled, and ruled, that is, we're talking about not a set. We're talking about Nebuchadnezzar, who decided Enough is enough is enough. I cannot deal with this conflict, confusion, and chaos anymore. It is too dry. It is too barren. It's too, it's too lifeless. Manifesting the opposite of supreme love and the opposite of the essence of life. End of quote. Page 260. The prophetic 12,594-year Banu cycle encoding the consciousness of higher peace through the divine union of masculine and feminine energy, book three, spiritual analysis of Western culture and the reawakening of Naga consciousness by high priest, Guatemani.
there's a new movement that is going on, or it is perceived to be a new movement called the 4B movement. Quote, recently the 4B movement, a feminist protest movement started by South Korean women, has gone viral among American women for its bold tactics of no heterosexual sex, no childbirth, no dating, and no heterosexual marriage until women receive equal rights. The 4B movement began in 2019 in South Korea, where women protested issues like abortion rights, domestic violence, the gender pay gap, and harmful beauty standards. What has to be comprehended at this point in time by those feminists and by the masculine, it is actually a manifestation, and it was actually initiated by one of the first in that generation of sacred ancestral priestesses. She who had that experience with the deification of Set, Sutek, Setan, as it's expressed in linguistic terms. We're talking about Nebuchadnezzar. In this reasoning, however, let's be clear, Nebuchadnezzar is coming from the Thoughts, reasonings, and actions of the divine union of masculine and feminine energy. She's not in any way taking that course of action that she decides that she's going to be a monotheistic female, but rather to be in, in tune, in alignment with the divine union of masculine and feminine energy so that they can give birth to sons and daughters who have a focus on upholding and maintaining divine order, divine socioeconomic family community order. And out of that, up until this very day, there seems to be sort of a recommitment by the feminist she to come to a full-fledged understanding that she is the first teacher. She's the birthplace of man, he, and she. And if she wants to be the birthplace of sin, she has that choice. If she wants to be the birthplace of divine order, she has that choice. At least the first choice of selection. And we had better respect that. And she had better respect that. If we plan on detoxing and purging this toxic and foul nature of energy out of our existence. Yeah, Set, a jealous God, a God of chaos, a God of vengeance, war, greed, envy, and wrath. He who loved the smell of burning flesh and a bloodbath on his behalf. A child who would create himself as a God in his own image. Quote, Seth was always seen as the god of power corrupted to its own ends, given to random chaotic eruptions of pure violence with no purpose save its own gratification. Quote, out of the Seth mentality would be born the concept of might makes right. Therefore, the acts of sexual violation, violence, war, and crime would become the rituals and rites of Seth, god of war, a god of vengeance, greed, wrath, a god of storms, chaos, a nature, an energy, a consciousness, set, a shapeshifter, a master deceiver, many different names, guises, and disguises. End of quote. Taken from the prophetic 12,594-year Banu cycle, encoding the consciousness of higher peace through the divine union of masculine and feminine energy by High Priest Kwatamani. This is to give notice to those who wish to be notified. Please be aware of the nature of energy that you call upon. So if we're going to do this for this living resurrection, and if we're going to focus on pushing the love supreme deeper and deeper, then we have to be able to clear some of that nonsense that's been impacted within the subconscious state of mind and reasoning. And we've talked about this, but it hasn't quite become clear just from the kind of the responses that I get, the kind of questions that the I have, etc. For example, there are those who 
have asked the question. But what happens if you're in situations and you have populations of individuals devoting their energy to a holistic living way of life? What happens if there are only a few of the few of the few of the few as you've spoken about? And I say, well, you know, the reality is this. We have to become a bit clearer. We have to remember that we that a master program has been going on for a very long time, and we cannot get into the fantasy, delusion, and illusionary dream of what life is going to be because you've taken a new challenge. That new challenge being following divine socioeconomic family community order. We have to realize some basic factors. Number one, that within and among certain populations who have been invaded by a monotheistic warlord nature of energy. The primary purpose was to divide, conquer, separate, and to rule. And in order to do that, the basic law is to divide the male from the female. That is the basic law of war. We're in a spiritual war. We're in a spiritual war. The basic law is to divide the male from the female. That is the basic law of war. And so if you do that, you've already split up the nucleus of family community order, regardless of where they are at that particular point in time. And now you've created chaos. 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 The fuel and source of Set, also known as Sutek, Satan. The god of chaos. The lord of the warlord. Open.